There are moments in the story of humankind that seem to transcend time, borders, and even reason itself. Moments that remind us of just how tiny we are and how far we dare to reach. In 1977, two fragile machines, barely the size of a small car, were launched into the void, with computers less powerful than the average car key today. Their mission was supposed to be modest, five years of data gathering from Jupiter and Saturn. But what happened next, no one could have predicted. Against all odds, these vessels, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, survived. They didn't just survive, they ventured into the unknown, defied expectations, and rewrote our understanding of the universe. But now, nearly 24 billion kilometers from home, something has happened, something we were not prepared for. Voyager 1, the furthest human-made object in existence, has sent back a signal that defies every known rule of logic. Its orientation readings make no sense. Its telemetry is corrupted. And yet, we still receive its voice, its whispers from the dark. How is that possible? What is really happening at the edge of our solar system? And is this just a technical glitch? Or something far more mysterious? Tonight we journey beyond the pale blue dot. We enter a realm where science falters, where signals become riddles, and where humanity's oldest explorer may have just stumbled upon something impossible. This is the story of Voyager 1's most chilling transmission yet, and why NASA is both thrilled and terrified by what they're learning. In a world where smartphones become obsolete in just a few years, the fact that Voyager 1 is still functioning after nearly half a century feels like science fiction. Think about it. This probe was built using 1970s technology. Its memory capacity is a joke by today's standards. It uses eight-track magnetic tapes for storage. Its central computer is dwarfed by the computing power of your microwave oven. And yet, for more than 45 years, this little machine has traveled farther than any object we've ever built. Beyond the orbit of Neptune, beyond the grasp of the sun's magnetic field, into the black ocean of interstellar space. This wasn't just good luck. It was brilliant, brutal engineering. Voyager 1 was built with triple redundancy systems. It has thrusters and backup thrusters, heaters and backup heaters. It carries a nuclear power source made from plutonium-238, which decays slowly enough to provide electrical power for decades. NASA engineers designed it to fail slowly, to keep going even when everything around it broke down. But now, for the first time in decades, Voyager 1 is showing signs of confusion. Its attitude and articulation control system, the part of its brain that tells it where it is and how to point its antenna back to Earth, is suddenly sending gibberish. Numbers that make no sense. Orientations that are physically impossible. And yet, paradoxically, the signal continues to come in, strong and steady, as if Voyager 1 is saying, I'm still here, but I'm seeing something you won't understand. The anomaly began subtly. Engineers at NASA noticed that the AACS data didn't match reality. The probe claimed to be pointing away from Earth, which would normally mean the signal would be lost. But the signal wasn't lost. In fact, it was arriving as clearly as ever, like someone claiming to be whispering from behind a wall while you can still hear their voice in your ear. The implications were unnerving. Was the data corrupted? Had the probe switched computers? Or, most bizarrely, was Voyager encountering some environmental force in deep space that we had never accounted for? Engineers scrambled for answers. They checked every subsystem. Most were stable. The scientific instruments were still returning coherent data. The power levels were low, yes, but still within tolerable range. The antenna, a three-meter dish floating in the dark, was somehow still pointed directly at Earth. And the science data being transmitted? Perfectly intact. It was as if Voyager's brain had fractured, but its body continued forward. NASA feared the worst. If the AACS had switched to a failed backup computer, it could be a death sentence. And then, a terrifying realization struck them. Voyager 1 didn't even know it was in trouble. It hadn't entered safe mode. It believed everything was fine, which meant that whatever was happening was happening in a way no one could explain. No fail-safes, no warnings, no alarms. Just nonsense transmitted with confidence across the void. Engineers worked tirelessly for months, sending commands, running simulations, 
reviewing ancient documentation written by people who had long retired. Every action had to be meticulously calculated. After all, it takes 22 hours for a signal to reach Voyager 1 and another 22 hours to hear back. That's nearly two full days for a single question and answer exchange. Some speculated radiation damage. Others wondered if the probe had begun using a corrupted subsystem to transmit its AACS data. There were even those, more poetic than practical, who asked, what if Voyager had encountered something out there? A magnetic distortion, a gravitational anomaly, a pocket of space that behaves unlike anything we've ever modeled. But eventually, a more grounded explanation emerged. The engineers discovered that Voyager 1 had indeed switched to an old, damaged computer system to send back orientation data, one that hadn't been used in decades and was never meant to function again. Why it did this, no one knows, but it did. And that decision corrupted the data it sent back. The fix? Instruct Voyager to use the correct, still-functional computer system once more. It sounds simple, but getting a 46-year-old spacecraft, billions of kilometers away, to override its own autonomous logic and trust you again? That's an act of delicate persuasion only few engineers in history will ever know. But it worked. Voyager 1 slowly began to speak coherently once again. The ghost in the machine was silenced. Or at least, it seemed that way. What Voyager 1 had encountered during this strange episode is still debated. Was it just a glitch? A random computational fluke? Or was it a symptom of something deeper, an invisible hand of physics we've yet to discover? After all, Voyager is not floating through empty space. It's navigating the interstellar medium, a chaotic soup of magnetic fields, cosmic radiation, and ancient remnants from stars long dead. Back in 2012, when Voyager 1 crossed the heliopause and officially entered interstellar space, it detected an 80-fold spike in plasma density, it felt the friction between solar winds and the interstellar medium. But curiously, it didn't register a change in magnetic orientation as scientists expected. This was strange. In fact, it was the opposite of what all models predicted. What kind of boundary is so turbulent that it changes density, but not magnetic structure? Now, as Voyager 1 continues through this volatile sea, many wonder if these inconsistencies are more than just data points. They may be warnings. Subtle signs that we are only beginning to understand the forces at play outside our sun's protective bubble. What if this wasn't a one-off error? What if the probe was reacting to something it couldn't describe? Something that interfered with its perception of space itself? The truth is, we might never know. But one thing is certain. Voyager 1 is not alone out there. And it's not just the silence of space that's unnerving. It's the quiet, persistent signal from a machine that may have seen too much. After Voyager 1's glitch with the AACS was resolved, there was a brief moment of calm, almost a breath of relief among NASA's engineering teams. But that sense of victory would be short-lived. Because not long after the spacecraft resumed normal communication, another critical subsystem began to falter. This time, it was the Flight Data Subsystem, or FDS. This is the part of the probe that handles all the science and engineering data before it's transmitted home. Without it, Voyager becomes blind and mute. No observations, no telemetry, no whispers from the stars. And just like before, the failure came quietly. In late 2023, the data stream turned to static. Not corrupted like the AACS readings. No, this was worse. It was empty. As if Voyager 1 had simply forgotten how to talk. The team spent months, yes, months, sending diagnostic commands, scanning through deep logs, searching for that one missing signal that might wake the system up. Every step was slow and painful. Remember, every command takes nearly a full day to complete. One wrong move, one miscalculation, and you risk bricking the only link we have with the probe forever. It took until June 2024 for engineers to finally restore functionality to the FDS. But that victory only deepened the mystery. Why were these failures happening now, so close together? Voyager 1 had crossed into interstellar space in 2012. It had survived extreme radiation, temperature drops, and aging for over a decade past that point. But suddenly, nearly 47 years after launch, it was breaking down in odd and unpredictable ways. 
not crashing, not burning out, but forgetting, confusing its systems, speaking gibberish, then going silent, and always doing so just when it seemed like it was trying to tell us something new. While all eyes were on Voyager 1's slow unraveling, a new crisis was unfolding with its twin, Voyager 2. In July 2023, during what should have been a routine maintenance command, engineers sent a signal instructing the probe to adjust its orientation by just two degrees. But in the void of interstellar space, two degrees is colossal. That tiny change caused Voyager 2's antenna to drift away from Earth's position. And just like that, contact was lost. No signal, no telemetry, no confirmation that the command had even been received. It was a silence that shook the Jet Propulsion Laboratory to its core. Voyager 2 was gone. The only hope was a gamble, an interstellar shout. Engineers used the massive Deep Space Network antenna in Canberra, Australia, to blast a powerful command in Voyager 2's direction, hoping against the odds that the probe's backup routines would receive it, process it, and respond. And then came the wait. 18 hours for the signal to reach Voyager and another 18 hours for a response, if there would be one. 36 hours of silence. And then, ping, a tiny signal. Weak, but unmistakable. Voyager 2 had turned its antenna back to Earth. It had heard the shout. It had obeyed. It was alive. But this event raised a more chilling question. What happens when we shout, and they no longer answer? If you've ever wondered what it feels like to be alone in the true sense of the word, interstellar space offers a haunting answer. Out here, where the sun is barely a pinprick and the nearest stars are light years away, the environment is unlike anything Voyager encountered in the planetary realm. Temperatures plummet to near absolute zero. Cosmic rays bombard the probes relentlessly. The radiation is harsh, the vacuum is perfect, and the magnetic fields are warped and tangled. And yet, Voyager keeps going. When NASA began shutting off heaters on the spacecraft to conserve power, most expected the sensitive instruments to die. One of the cosmic ray detectors was allowed to drop 70 degrees Celsius below its minimum operational temperature. But the result shocked everyone. The instrument kept working, without a hiccup. It was as if Voyager had adapted to the cold. Or perhaps something out there was helping shield it. These bizarre tolerances have led some to speculate whether there are hidden forces at work beyond the heliopause, forces we don't yet understand. The magnetic fields in interstellar space aren't uniform. They bend, twist, and form strange patterns, bubbles, as Voyager first discovered when it crossed the termination shock. The boundaries of our solar system are not clean. They're messy, distorted, alive. What if Voyager's strange behavior isn't failure, but reaction? We now stand at the edge of an era. Voyager 1 and 2 are losing power, slowly, inevitably. By 2025, most of their systems will shut down completely. Their scientific instruments will go dark. Their heaters will fail. And then one day, the last whisper will be sent, a signal traveling at light speed that will reach Earth nearly a day later. And after that, there will be only silence. But Voyager's journey won't end. Even when the signals stop, even when Earth is no longer listening, both probes will continue to drift silently through the galaxy. Voyager 1 is headed toward the Camelopardalis constellation, and in 40,000 years, it may pass close to another star. Voyager 2 will brush past Ross 248 in just under 300,000 years. And if, by some impossible chance, they are intercepted, by a civilization more advanced, by a sentient species unlike our own, they will find the golden records aboard. Messages in 55 languages, music, sounds of Earth, greetings from humanity, proof that we were here, that we dared to reach, that we sent out a voice into the dark, hoping someone, someday, might answer. One day, Voyager 1 will fall silent. There will be no explosion, no fire, no dramatic shutdown, just the quiet fading of a signal that has pulsed through the darkness for nearly half a century. A pulse that began in the age of disco and Cold War, that crossed planets, outlived its creators, and traveled farther than any human artifact ever has, or likely ever will. When that day comes, 
We won't know exactly when the last word was spoken. We'll only know that it didn't come again. But that's the beauty and tragedy of Voyager. It was never about just gathering data. It was about sending a part of ourselves into the unknown. A message, a mirror, a hope. And now, as Voyager 1 reaches realms no mind can truly imagine, its transmissions are no longer just signals. They're echoes of what we once believed possible. They are the final lines of a poem written by engineers, dreamers, scientists, and believers. A poem floating through eternity in search of a reader. We may never know what truly caused that impossible encounter, whether it was simply a machine's last gasp or something far stranger, an unseen force, a new frontier in physics, or perhaps even a faint whisper from another intelligence watching us back. But one thing is certain. Voyager's mission is no longer about where it's going. It's about what it's become, a monument to human curiosity, perseverance, and wonder. If this journey through the stars moved you even half as much as it moved us, don't let it end here. Subscribe now and turn on notifications, because what's out there is far from over. In fact, we're just getting started. And tell me in the comments, what do you believe Voyager really encountered? A glitch, a new law of nature, or something we were never meant to find. Until next time, keep watching the stars, because one day they might just watch back.